Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Project Pro Expert Talks. We are honored to have Tom uh, here with us. Uh, Tom's had a, a fantastic 30-year uh, uh, career, starting off as a nuclear engineer and as a lead data scientist now. Uh, and Tom also runs a very popular uh, uh, community uh, called Integrated ML and AI. Um, uh, Tom, um, uh, totally honored to have you here. Thank you so much for taking time. Oh, the honor's mine. Thanks for having me. Really glad to be here. Super. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Tom, I would love to uh, get your thoughts on, um, you know, through your career in data science, what has changed uh, and what has not? Uh, sure. Yeah. This is a great question, by the way. Um, I try to help people understand, and there may be some people out there that disagree with me on this point, and that's okay, but data science has been around for as long as physicists have been using math, in my opinion. Um, we didn't really see it that way. The, the term data science is still pretty new, actually. Um, I would say the term that we used among engineers that like to do predictive modeling was, oh, we did that empirically, or we were curve fitting. And that was shorthand for saying, we're not using first principle physics, but even first principle physics is grounded in what you would call data science or oftentimes linear regression or, or uh, linear regression is kind of a misnomer too. Mm -hmm. Because we can certainly model uh, nonlinear things with with linear regression, and it, it gets confusing. That is, once we add the feature engineering. Yeah. But so in that sense, that hasn't changed. But in the sense of now, mathematicians and statisticians are being held in higher regard. Now there's a greater integration of the disciplines. Mm. For example, an engineer that's done a lot of predictive modeling can easily and powerfully, I wish that I would add, um, when I meet people that do uh, computational fluid mm -hmm. dynamics and they ask me about be becoming a data science, I'm like, trust me, compared to what you do now, it's going <laughs> to be easy. <laughs> and so uh, I just tell them, you know, yeah, you're going to have to learn some terminology and get acquainted with some new things some new tools, but it's it's going to feel like a playground for you. And but so obviously, though, the, it's the integration of all this brilliance around math, statistics, computing, coding. We need all of that to be good data scientists today. And but then what has that that is one thing that has changed significantly. The other is that computing power. I love to tell the kids <laughs> that I learned to program on punch cards and I'm always elated when they don't know what that is because you know I, I'm not one of those that likes to tell the stories I used to walk two direction you know I used to walk to school and back in the snow 10 miles one way you know we used to joke about old people telling us those stories and but when someone tells me they didn't have to learn punch cards or use a terminal to a mainframe, I'm happy for them. <laughs> and uh, so the computing power, the ubiquitous nature of access to computing, for example, that I can just check out a, a GPU off Google Colab or a yeah. TPU, that's just phenomenal, it's awesome. Um, that we can do what you and I are doing right now. Yeah. The integration of thought and culture because and, and I know COVID's horrible, but there's been a benefit that we're becoming, we're, we're developing friends more worldwide now. And I think that's rapidly improving the space in yeah. machine learning and data science. Um, so really the biggest, the, so much of what we use has been around for a long time. At the mm -hmm. same time, when you look at transformers and back propagation, well, really, you and I wouldn't even be talking if Hinton and his buddies hadn't written a paper on back propagation. I mean, think about that. It, every, a lot of what we do depends on that. A lot of the phenomenal uh, machine learning training we do. So I, I think 
at a high level, that covers it pretty well. Understood. Okay. And you were just talking about friends across borders that we got to make over the last year, Tom. And you're in this fantastic uh, community called Integrated ML and AI. Uh, uh, could you talk a little bit more about um, what gave the genesis to that and uh, what happens in the community and, and who, who participates yeah. in it? I, I would love to share that. Um, it went from a journey of not being able to accept that I was an in-demand mentor <laughs> to finally resolving myself to that fact. And literally, so I have nine kids, five are internationally adopted. They're all legal. But I have a lot of not illegal kids, but I have now I have a lot of non-legal kids. And I'll just name a couple. So um, while I was mentoring, while I was starting to interact with more people worldwide, uh, a very brilliant young Indian woman, uh, we developed a friendship. She became like my daughter. Her family now regards me as the third parent to her, that is. And uh, she was a big encouragement to me to do more. And when I started getting too many one-on-one -on -one mentoring requests, mm -hmm. Um, that's when we started our weekly meetup. And, but I, I made a big point. I said, look guys, I, I do feel like I have something to offer you, but I want you to get the very best mentoring. So I want others that are here. When you ask your question, let others answer too. And what we found is the integration of that advice for that person that asked the question mm -hmm. helped not only that person a lot better than just hearing from me, but helped the whole group. Mm -hmm. And we're still very young, but we've grown. We're, our trajectory is very fast right now. And now we're starting to beg people to please don't be afraid to copy us. Um, we'll get to a point where we can't serve everyone well enough, but I keep trying to find ways to help more people without getting overloaded. And I've learned the truth of a saying that I heard not long ago. It's uh, do what you can, that in my case, to try to help others, then do what's possible. And then I'm gonna add a little bit to it. Then keep finding ways to do more that's possible. And before long, you'll look back and realizing you're doing what you thought was impossible. And I definitely feel that way now. I've modified the statement a little bit. But, you know, I, I totally agree. I, I was in one of your sessions last weekend and, you know, loved the energy and the flow of thoughts and how people are helping each other. It was very powerful. Um, in I fact, I want to add, Benny, that on the Saturdays that I talk the least, I'm the most happy. It's not that I don't want to give too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just that it proves over and over to me the spirit that's leading us. Mm -hmm. And we, we really are serious about this. We don't have a leader. Now, I guess people would regard me as the leader, mm -hmm. but I try to let the more together spirit lead. Mm -hmm. When I interject, it's usually more of a little bit of a shepherding to, mm -hmm. to think about some other possibilities on a point we're discussing mm -hmm. so in that spirit we have some people that are either more experienced or older that are on our stewardship team and we meet weekly now just to make sure we're we're helping the group go the directions they most need so okay. if there is a leader mm -hmm. it's the it's the newest person that has the greatest needs it would be it's their needs that are that lead us but again it's the spirit that everybody you can see them adopting the spirit of more together row more together learn more together uh help each other more together okay, okay. and and when you're mentoring um um your, your mentees tom um, is there a common trend you notice on missing gaps in in many of them that just happens over and over again um, absolutely and we what, find what these as, yeah. yeah yeah we find these as themes on linkedin posts mm. uh, in linkedin comments uh in questions that i get one-on-one -on -one. so when someone reaches out to me on linkedin which i encourage everyone that's listening here to do i usually ask do you want to be part of our community and would you like a long starter message that 
I've created to help people get started. Mm -hmm. And I keep trying to refine and improve that message. It's got resources. It's got links to blog posts I've written. Mm -hmm. And so that's the key. We're actually behind the blog posts we want to write to answer these sort of questions or needs mm -hmm. you brought up. The very first post I wrote was on a personalized learning plan. And just to summarize that post very quickly, you need to be the master of your own learning plan because there's too much to learn and only you can discern what you most need to learn. Mm. And it may be times that it's driven by passion. It may be other times that it's driven by needs in your current professional role, but you need to decide what you're learning because even if you knew everything in data science right now, which mm -hmm. no one does, mm -hmm. the trajectory is going too fast for any mm -hmm. one person to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. So this is another big reason I emphasize mastering concepts over details. Um, once you really understand a few details on the basics mm -hmm. and you're, you're good at the concepts, mm -hmm. it's much easier to learn new things rapidly. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, and, and helping people understand too that personalized learning plan, your first one's not going to be very good. You need to keep it dynamic and growing. Over time, it'll get very good. But what's really important is learning to plan your learning again because there's so much. The next post was on okay, it's so easy to get burned out in this space, overwhelmed, uh, imposter syndrome, all of the above. I, by the way, if without going into it, please reject imposter syndrome. Everybody knows a limited amount of stuff. Just do your best, enjoy learning, please try to reject it. But um, it, was, it was a post called Cycles of Becoming a Great Data Scientist. And I, I use a fictional character named Ta. And most people that know me and have read my post, they know about Ta and we joke about Ta. He's a mythical, not he, Ta is a mythical data scientist mm -hmm. that um, Ta still learns things the hard way, mm -hmm. but Ta's a pretty good example of a very good young data scientist. Mm -hmm. And to my other daughter, Tina Mary, I gave the first um, annual Ta Award um, to her because she exemplified Ta so well. Um, but in that post, I just showed, look, Think of your data science life as the part of an iceberg above the water. Mm -hmm. If the part below the water is not also good, mm -hmm. you're going to melt. <laughs> so focus, we, in fact, in our mentoring sessions, we deal with the whole person. We deal with soft skills a lot. Uh, we deal with um, just uh, personal life skills, but we do, we deal with, okay, how do you go about interviewing resumes? Uh, building an online portfolio that will get you noticed mm -hmm. and so um but that that all of that can cause a lot of burnout so we just point out work hard rest harder that that's probably the main emphasis of that post but then and there's another post but i'd say the next most important one was being a data scientist we point out please don't think that your first role needs to have a data science title Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, if you want to be a data scientist, then be a data scientist. Well, what's a data scientist do? A data scientist doesn't wait for a role title of data scientist. A data scientist uses data and predictive analytics with data to do a better job in their current role. Mm -hmm. And then as you do more and more data scientists and you grow your online portfolio and you help the greater community, it won't be long, you'll be regarded as a data scientist. And by the way, I'm not a perfect data scientist. I've gotten way behind on keeping up with the latest stuff. And I, I had to course correct. Um, but now I, I help people with these kind of concepts. And so yeah, I'd say though, the things we see most is you can't learn it all, have a good plan. Uh, the the balanced life is a myth, but you need to keep trying to return to balance at least. And that's the cycles post. And then the final one is just be a data scientist. Don't worry about your role title. In fact, I just got off a great show where they were interviewing Robin Hunt. It's how to get an analytics job was interviewing her. Mm -hmm. And she made a big deal about that. that. Don't think that your first role is gonna be in data science. 
just try to get into the field and start using data science like, mm -hmm. or data visualization or anything. You know, yeah. use data to improve your mm -hmm. organization. Right. To help your organization. Mm -hmm. That's 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 very helpful. Lots of wisdom in there, especially that last point you made, which is like make your own opportunities. Don't wait for somebody to come and give you that role. Right. I love the way you said that, Vinny. That's perfect. Yeah, that's a fantastic point, Tom. Thank you. And uh, Tom, uh, you know, through your career, uh, 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 given the expert data scientist you are, are there specific resources you've always gone back to to uh, kind of keep yourself updated and skilled in the field? Um, that's a great question. And um, I, I would caution looking at me as an expert data scientist. I think I'm a good data scientist, but the, the, one of my strengths, as pointed out my, by my daughter, Manfred Gudraja, she's one of my, she's my, probably my top non-legal daughter. <laughs> she, she, we were on a show together and she said, she, she can be quite direct. She said, you know, Tom's not necessarily the best mentor in the world, but he's one of the best learners I've ever met. And that went deep to my heart because I even write a, a weekly series on how to learn and grow faster and better because that but it's it's more i don't feel like i'm an expert at that it's just something i have a passion around i'm a lifelong student of it and i, I got frustrated with not being able to learn to to um keep some type of visual tool that reminded me of all the super wise things i've learned my whole life so now i'm backtracking and correcting that and that this is the answer to your question, I think. It's my uh, systematic Saturday posts on LinkedIn. And uh, I've had pe many people ask me to write a book on it, but really jump in and make your own model about how you learn and grow that, that, that kind of collects all the best techniques. It's, it's by, by, and this is more to the point of your question, by focusing on concepts. Mm -hmm. Now, when I need to go do something, I don't remember it all perfectly well, but I get, if I start from having known the concept really well, now I'm reviewing code I might've had that I save, save all your code, save all your code and keep it on a cloud drive or on GitHub. Don't, don't leave your company without taking the tools, at least the generalized tools you've written. Yeah. Um, but you, you're always collecting, you're always building your portfolio and that's a body of work you can refer back to. You're always keeping visualizations of the concepts you've learned so you can refer back to that. That way, uh, for example, I've taught control system design at the university level five times. I had to review it every time I taught it, Vinny, every time. I didn't just show up and go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to pull this out of my head. No way. I had to review it. But I knew the concepts super well. Mm -hmm. And so I could review very fast when I, and yeah. then I could learn by leveraging all that good conceptual knowledge. I could learn new things faster too. Understood. Okay. Okay. And, and while you are working on your uh, projects, your data science projects um, um, at, at your companies, um, where there's very specific tactics that you employed to get your work done faster. Ah, uh, okay my work done yes i'd say and it took me forever to learn this benny i'd say i learned it the hard way mm -hmm. i take more frequent breaks now i don't i used to feel like no so i was a competitive swimmer growing up and we worked out so hard mm -hmm. and so i had this concept that you work hard and you don't give up and, and i had to stop and think back you know we did a lot of interval training you know we we would do different kinds of sets, but I remember we rested a lot in workouts, mm -hmm. and I was missing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I still had the concept of the days we'd show up, we'd do a warm up, and coach would say, "Okay, swim five thousand yards straight," mm -hmm. and we did that very rarely. And then I realized, oh, you used to study way too hard. You would just go for marathon sessions, and if you're in flow, that's not bad, but. Now, frankly, I just get up and take a break more often. It's huge. Mm -hmm. um, and if I hit a block, that's an indication that I'm tired. 
ought to go take a shower. I got I, I ought to quit staring at my code and my screens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in graduate school, I was working on some pretty heavy stuff and it mm -hmm. was fun. But there were times I'd get stuck and I don't know how I happened on this, but I'd grab a clipboard and a pen and I'd just leave my computers. And I would go walk around campus and Benny without fail, within 400 yards, I had, yeah. it was like, ta-da, I right. really just need to get away from, just have a change of scenery, take a yeah. mental break. Yeah. It, it's, some, it's powerful taking a break when you're, when you're hitting a wall or a hurdle, just stop, you're right. human. <laughs> That, that, that's super helpful, Tom. I mean, it's, I, mean it's always, I, I think it's even more helpful because it's so counterintuitive uh, that this was, uh, yeah. Uh, and I guess that makes it more helpful. One of my adopted non-legal sons from India, uh, Kushal Dev, he was making me laugh so hard when he was chatting with me one time. He was trying to find ways to maximize the quality of his sleep so he would sleep less and he could study all the time. I said, mm -hmm. Kushal, stop. You know, it's not about how little rest you can get by with, it's about being rested. Data science takes a sharp mind and an unrested mind is not sharp. So it's about staying rested and, and staying in good shape and eating a good diet. All of those things are super important to being a good data scientist. Yeah, okay. Uh, Tom, uh, this has been fantastically helpful. Uh, uh, really appreciate the time uh, you took for this. Um, oh, um, I, yeah. I'm honored. Yeah, and I want to stress, I'm really just sharing my hard lessons. I'm not necessarily good at the things I share. I'm just a better student of them now that I'm older. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. I think the, the viewers would love to connect with you on LinkedIn and we, we will share yes. your profile with them. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Please yeah. just, and it's simple. It's just uh, Tom, my Tom is spelled T H O M. It's short for Tom. And then Ives is I, V as in victory, E S. Yeah. And we'll also share the uh, uh, coordinates of the community, uh, integrated ML and AI, for those of, who are interested in, in joining. Yeah, if you want to join, just send me a message on LinkedIn and say you want to join. It's that simple. If you already know someone in our family, we would call it a family, if you already know someone in it, um, that you can let them know and, and give them your email address and then they'll share it with one of the steward team members. That can add them to our Slack work group. Okay, super. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. It was an honor to be here. Thank you.